the whole line is there are no shortcuts, no lies. Mm -hmm. You have to commit to this. And just the idea of even like even in trying to become what he needs to become and becoming the Ant Man and essentially becoming a superhero and becoming um you know, eventually becoming an Avenger, the fact that there's no easy way to do this. You have to press in and push through all the all of the tough stuff mm -hmm. to get to where you know you need to be. Yeah. I think that's a that's a an inter that's a great message that I think really is sort of a sort of a meta level uh, thing that is going on in, in so many of these films, right? And I think that's probably why mm -hmm. people love superhero movies so much and why Marvel is just like, you know, rolling around in giant piles of money over there. Yeah. <laughs> like like this is a this is a a a theme that really resonates on a, on a profound level I think with so many people because you know obviously we're not you know fighting guys in yellow suits who are shooting lasers at us but you know we're all struggling with things in our lives and 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 this is a these are great movies that that show that the you know virtue of perseverance and yep. you know, overcoming hardships and and you know and that's why the hero's journey is is the hero's journey exactly i think one of the things that these movies do in kind of this overarching way that we can relate to is these movies give us permission to admit that life is hard hmm. that, that that life is hard that it's difficult that it's challenging and essentially you know we have the choice to make between, you know, we can either stand up to it and to persevere or we can let life roll us over. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes people make the choice to, you know, let life happen to them, let life, you know, roll them over, and that can lead to some pretty dire and difficult consequences and yet you're confronted with these films where a lot of the characters are confronted with things beyond what we could ever you know ask of ourselves or imagine and we mm -hmm. watch them do it and right. for a lot of us I think it puts us in a place where well if Ant-Man can do this and Iron Man can do this mm -hmm. and Captain America can do this, and they're dealing with stuff I can't even fathom. Maybe I can make it in whatever, you know, my point of struggle and contention is too. Right. Well, and, and I think that one of the really interesting things about Scott Lang, you know, especially on, on this sort of riff that we're hitting right now, is he, I think he's a lot more relatable than, than many of the other characters. I mean, obviously Steve Rogers, like he starts out as a, a really wimpy guy, but he has right. he has this inner nobility that is like above and beyond what you will find in in most normal people, you know. Sure. And sure. and Tony Stark, obviously, he was you know born into privilege and is a billionaire, and and yeah, he has his hangups, but like oh, you know, problems, right? <laughs> you know, and then and some yeah. of these other these other guys, like they do have you know something exceptional about themselves that sort of like puts them in that that position of being a hero but scott lang you know he's kind of just a guy right you know a, a little bit like peter parker but even but even to a lesser extent because he doesn't have the he, he doesn't have like this intrinsic power now like it's all you know from from the suit but he you right. know, he's not like he's not some super uber qualified guy i mean yeah he's got a master's degree in electrical engineering but but that is not I mean that's not an unattainable thing, you know, like right, being a not. billionaire or being a super soldier or being, you know, whatever X, Y, Z. You know, and he's not really worried about, you know, like the rise and fall of his corporate empire. He's worried about, you know, how am I gonna how am I gonna be able to be in my daughter's life? Right. You know, how am how I gonna am be I gonna... able to get a job so I can pay child support? Right. You know, this is this right. is really, really like rubber meets the road basic, you know, kind of kind of concerns. And I think that makes him 
that makes him a lot more relatable um, than than some of the other characters uh, that are running around in the MCU. Well, I think I think with, with Scott, um, you know, yeah, Peter Quill from Guardians of the Galaxy is a little bit like this too, in the sense that he just happens to be an eight or nine year old kid who watches his mom die from cancer, and right. then, yes. He gets you know, he gets kidnapped by aliens, but <laughs> at the start of Guardians of the Galaxy, who hasn't been a, kidnapped by <laughs> aliens? <laughs> right, again. I haven't. <laughs> um, <he's just> a... <laughs> of which same, we're very glad. Right, he. I mean, he's just a he's just a kid with a Walkman, right? But I I think with with Scott, it's very much he's an example of you know the fact that you don't necessarily. Um, call the qualify you qualify the column and that's yeah. that's a lot of what his relationship with Hank Pym is mm-hmm. yeah all right well I think we got some we've got some fun stuff there um, and we're going to cut to uh, keeping in in uh, with the with the sort of small and and cute uh guests <laughs> we're going to we're going to cut to a um a a segment of understand a random fandom that i was delighted to record with my nephew or my niece with my niece Emma Sar when i was in Estonia a couple of months ago and she is going to explain to Joshua what my little pony is all about so this is a very, very special segment of Understand a Random Fandom because we are live and in person with our jock eye for the nerd guy, my brother, Joshua Vinalas. Joshua Vinalas. <laughs> along with us today <laughs> is <laughs> My Little Pony expert. <laughs> Emma Grace Sarr! <laughs> Emma Grace Sarr is my very first niece ever, and still the cutest girl niece that I have. And she's the only one. By default, and by virtue. <laughs> so anyway, yes, as Joshua mentioned already, we are going to be talking about My Little Pony and that is a fandom that I think a lot of adults don't really understand well. Uh, there are some adults who understand it better than they should. Are you, Emma, are you familiar with the, with the phenomenon of bronies? Do you know about this thing? No. These are adult male people who are fans of My Little Pony. Oh, wow. <laughs> yep. Yep, so... We're not going to talk about that very much more. That's that's about that's about all the attention that that deserves. But uh, Emma, go ahead and go ahead and tell us uh, tell us just a little bit about yourself first. I want to, just the audience to know a couple of things about you. Okay, so um, my name is Emma Grace. Um, I'm ten years old. I uh, really like ponies, and um, I. Um, go to school and I learn music. Excellent. That'll be perfect. Okay, so explain to Joshua about what My Little Pony is and why you like it. Well, um, My Little Ponies, they're like colorful horses, I would say. There's a um, video or like a what is it called? Show, uh, and they like make I don't know episodes of the like some adventures like they do, and then there's um, uh, toys, uh, mm-hmm. pony toys that uh, there's a lot of different kinds and colorful and all the hair or whatever they have, and um, uh, yeah, I like them because it, they're fun to play with. And there's so many props that you can do, and just like it's so cool to like make up stories with them. Mm-hmm. So it's pretty much like Barbies, except they're <laughs> ponies this time. Exactly. Nice. <laughs> so Emma, can you tell us a little bit about the storylines from the show? Like, what's the what's the main story that's happening in the show? So uh, the basic 
next thing that they always talk about is like friendship and magic. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, <laughs> that is the uh, thing that they talk about the most and they're trying to express. Okay. So, that, and how do they show the, each other that they are friends? Like, what are some of what are some of the stories that have happened where they've been good friends to each other? Well, um, well, one time there was a, like a bad person who like wanted to invade everybody, and they took their friendship away and separated everybody. But then one pony whose name is Twilight Sparkle is like the main leader. She uh, wanted to, to like help everybody and got everybody together, or at least tried. And then, um, uh, like with her magic, she like remembered everything. Like put, like I don't know, like a cast a spell on them that would like make them uh, remember all the memories, and that like made them back to who they were and uh, helped them all to be friends again. Mm. All like, right. <laughs> So the so Twilight Sparkle, like it was a risk for her, right? She exactly. had it was dangerous yeah. for her, but she was she did it because they were her friends. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's cool. Friendship so friendship is magic. Friendship is magic. <laughs> There's the magic of friendship. <laughs> Emma, do you know how old My Little Pony actually is? Like when it really started? No clue, but I think a long time. It was quite a while ago. It started actually before Joshua or I were even born. Wow. Yeah, because the first My Little Pony stuff came out in 1981. Wow. I've heard of like the old kinds of them, and mm -hmm. I've seen like the episode, and they look really weird. <laughs> <laughs> the, the visual style is, is very yes. different. That's true. Yeah, because I remember seeing, I didn't really watch the cartoon, but I remember seeing the cartoon when I was, when I was younger, when I was about your age. Um, Yep. So. So it was big back in the day, but now it's kind of. Now it's big again. Now it's big again. <laughs> yeah. Solid comeback. So there was the my, there was the friendship is magic show. Was there another? There was there a different other show also? Uh, yes, actually, they um, came up with a new series. It's like a Questier Girls, where mm -hmm. the ponies go through a mirror, and they turn into like human ponies. So uh, they're still they're humans, but again they're like colorful and like mm -hmm. and they're still the same concept, but they're like humans. Okay. You lost me at colorful human ponies. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Emma, can you think of any reason why an adult man would actually should be interested in My Little Pony? Mm. Say no. No, exactly. <laughs> usually, usually in this segment, we try to kind of like to make the case for a fandom and uh, and and explain to Joshua why he might be interested in looking into this and finding out more about it. But today, we're going to make an exception to that pattern and say, "Bronies, we don't want to hate anybody, but you guys are weird." <laughs> but subscribe and like. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> You'll like the future episodes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Emma, thank you so much for talking with us today. Now, you have, you have a YouTube channel, right? Yes. I what do. is your YouTube channel? Uh, Emma Grace Tube. Emma Grace Tube. Yes. Okay. Well, we'll put a link for that in the show notes <laughs> so that everybody can see all of your good cutie marks. <laughs> And thanks, John, for flying all the way out to Estonia to have this interview with us. That's right. This was the reason why I came. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right. Okay, cool. Thanks, guys. And that's, uh, that's the end of that. It's a wrap. Bye. <laughs> all right, so that's, that's My Little Pony. <laughs> and if any, of, if any of our listeners are actually bronies, then I'm, I'm sorry about that. Um, you know, whatever. <laughs> so uh, to to round out the episode tonight we have a piece of guaranteed good news and this is um i don't know it's not it's not like the very you know typical kind of thing that we that we usually like to do but it is super cool and it also is in keeping with the with the small theme um i guess every year national geographic has a macro photo contest 
and uh, some of the pictures that are that are captured with this photography on 